So that's weird. It just said recording in progress for the first time. I've never had to do that before. It just said it in my head. Do you hear it too? Yeah, that yeah. was weird. That was weird. I've never had to do that before. Anyway, but hey, so usually I announce we're recording, but that's one way to do it too. We are recording. So what's up, man? I uh, I figured um, Memorial Day is a good day to have you back on, talk about all the progress you've been making with C2C for uh, PTSD and uh, catch us all up on what's been going on and uh, kind of chime in. Let us know what's up. Yeah, man, I want to thank you for having me. Um, like I said, when you had me, I was kind of in the infancy of C2C. You know, this is what we're doing. This is, you know, the ride was coming up. We just kind of started, started the planning of the ride and, you know, the planning of the whole cross country trip and, you know, what, what my thoughts were and mission of C2C and man, what the hell it's happened. You know, it's been <laughs> four, three because we did this in January, right? I think we it did was, the first first it was, one. It was months ago. Yeah, it was earlier. Yeah. In the year. So in four months, there's been so much shit that has changed, man, and it's been great. You know, I've I've gone through my peaks and balances and uh, peaks and valleys and all that kind of stuff. But you know, we've already gotten to shot. We've already gotten to the county commission. Um, We've infiltrated them, which is good. Not infiltrated, but more <laughs> gotten, gotten their turn. gotten their words, you know, got that we've gotten our voices heard. So explain what happened with that. So people yeah, who, so, who aren't as familiar with so what basically what were you doing real quick? You're doing a you're raising awareness for PTSD mm -hmm. for veterans and first responders, and yeah. you're doing a coast to coast motorcycle ride. Yes, on June 19th, we're doing the local event at uh starting at St. John's Hops. Uh kick uh registrations from 8 30 to 10 um it's going to be escorted by lcso to gator harley davidson um 10 per ten dollars per person uh for if you're going to be uh participating in the ride so it's going to be uh per rider and uh per uh passenger so uh once we uh, are escorted to by lcso to gator harley davidson once we get to gator we actually are going to be having uh, pretty much a hell of a time nice party we're going to have a live band food bar we have um, some nice uh, stuff that we're actually going to be raffling off that you're that everyone has a chance to get in on. You know, we have uh, stuff from um, it's going to be I'm going to try to hit it all. We have uh, some helmet covers from Moto Loot, which are some really cool looking things. If you just want to kind of roll around town, you know, they got uh, they included a clown and a cop so you put it on your helmet and it looks like you're a little clown and a cop so it's really cool just to ride around town with that's awesome um yeah we got um wednesday i went down and picked up a uh, signed puck and a signed hat from the tampa bay lightning um dude that's awesome yes uh we have as a uh we have the helmet signed by the uh by a member of the miami dolphins um we have a bar cart uh that's a harley davidson bar cart that's about a 300 hundred dollar value um we have a hog watch and uh, many people if you aren't familiar it's pretty much a watch that you can put your key fob in because all the harley davidson's now are all electronic you don't have a key to start the bike it's oh, all a key fob so what it is is this key fob this this watch has it where you can take your key fob apart and put the key fob in the watch so you don't have to carry around your key. All you have to do is put a watch on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's about a $300 watch too. We're going to be raffling that off as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and we have some other stuff there too. And, you know, we've partnered with uh, my uh, doc, you know, that helped me out with my, um, you know, my process for my prescription for my medical marijuana as well. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sean Latte, the uh, bud docs out in Sanford and Lake Mary. Um, we're actually going to be um, raffling off a certification for a veteran or a first responder that obviously if they feel the need, if they're not working or anything like that, if they're retired and they feel that they could benefit from it, um, it's obviously going to be based on an honor system. If you want to get out there and you feel that you're going to need, and we're going to have a list of the conditions that right there that that are qualified and if you feel that you're qualified for it all you're gonna have to do is put your name and contact information and put your name in this in this hat or whatever you know that, that there's no that it's it's going to be donated 
It's been donated by the doc. We're not raising any money. It's going to help a veteran or a first responder to help them with some kind of treatment. It's not going to no money whatsoever. That's so, so cool of them to do that. That's yes. really awesome. So I got to say, we were just talking about it before we started recording. Like they were talking about different different strains that help us out with different things we're going through. Like I've had more anxiety lately. I've been going towards more towards um, like hybrids versus sativas and just like the entire premise of like being able to have that kind of medicinal option mm -hmm. available to you is is phenomenal and i think that it's it's like it it's, a lot of people it, it leaves it leaves a lot of it up to the patient you know it, it doesn't leave it up to the doctor you know the doctor truly you know my doc you know when i went he was very open to any question that you have you know hey i'm here for you and still to this day if you have any questions he, you're more than welcome to give his office a call or give him a call and he'll steer you in the right way. But he says, this is something that you're going to have to learn on your own. You know, mm. you're going to have to try to figure out what works best for you. And it's something that's just so nice that, you know, something that's not highly processed, something that's natural that you actually figure out on your own that you don't have to sit here and wait two to three weeks to get in to see a doctor. You don't right. have, you know, you're like, okay, well, that's not working. I know not to use that again. So let me try this. This did work in the past. So let me stick with this, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just so, you know, amazing. And within that concept, because I am such an advocate of, you know, the medical cannabis, you know, I've done my own video on it about how it truly has changed my life. And, um, my family was very apprehensive about it, about it at the very beginning. You know, I was never a user before, you know, so I can't, I can't, I'm not going to be one of those people that actually said I got the card just to, just so I could be legal. Right. You know, I have, I was never a user. I would use it occasionally. I think I used it like once or twice when I got out of the military, just because I could, you yeah. know, at a concert, cause it went around, yeah. you know, but you know, I never purchased it you know i never and this was even before i worked at lake county so this was shoot this was a year after me getting out of the military so this is 2011 2010 to 2011 this happened so this was before my ptsd even really got to a point where i needed a lot of help mm -hmm. you know so i was to a point in june where i was like i'll try anything you know it won't hurt yeah so and it was just so great that he was able to do that. And I've gotten um, Treadwell Farms out there. Um, you're very familiar with uh, the Treadwells. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually um, J uh, Julie. Um, you know, you okay. know Julie Treadwell. It's actually the, her family. Oh, no shit. Yes. Uh, oh, her, awesome. sister, her sister is uh, her sister and father and them uh, run the business. Um, it's, uh, they, own, they run a hemp farm. So they, uh, cause they run hemp and they produce CBD products. Good for them. So, yes. So I went out there probably about two weeks, two, three weeks ago and saw their processing plant right there in Umatilla. And it's just a phenomenal place. And they gave me some of their CBD products to try. And, you know, they're just amazing products and they're local and, you know, you can tell that they're a hundred percent CBD products. It's not one of these products that are marketed out there as a CBD and it's not really CBD. And, you know, they're going to be at the event as well. Um, Jay, uh, Jamie, which is the uh, head, is, which is the one that runs it. You know, she's obviously got a very close part to first responders and military with her uh, dad being uh, ex-military and obviously her sister being a former um, paramedic herself. Mm -hmm. and um we also have a, a big i haven't announced it yet on the website but it's one hell of a place to do it uh one plant is going to be there oh shit dude that's amazing yes. i have one plant that's going to be there they're gonna um they uh got a big swag basket that they donated to be raffled off uh at the event um so they have been absolutely and uh the treadwells actually put me in contact with them as well so you That's know so because cool. yeah because they are just so great you know and they believe in what's happening so 
it's you know this is how much i care about what's going on is that it needs to be out there it needs to be to these people you know me and mm. you know i don't care who knows it at this point because at this point i you know at the very beginning i told you you know i told you at the beginning you know i wasn't sure you know i don't want anyone to know what's going on and you know after discussing with my wife and everything like that i was like you know i i can't do this you know, I'm going against what I am creating, you know, because I need to advocate for the veterans and the first responders and do what helps them, no matter what other people think. It's not like I'm doing anything illegal. I'm right. not saying to do anything against, I'm saying, go by the law and do what you need to do, mm. you know, because uh, many people are afraid to do it because of the, uh, because of the VA. You know, the VA, you know, you will not lose your benefits. That's an important you, thing people need to know. That you don't yeah. lose VA benefits if you, you do not lose VA card. benefits. You know, and this, if you're in a state that it has it legal, you go get your, your medical card. You will not lose health and you will not lose your health benefits and you cannot be denied any increase in your benefits because it's in a state that it's legal. The VA would a lot of the doctors would like to prescribe it but unfortunately it can't because it's still a class one narcotic and a schedule one narcotic and mm -hmm. so they uh, they created this law that says well if it's legal in your state and you go to a doctor that's that can prescribe it to you no harm no foul the va just can't do it right so now it's you know that's the big thing the, you will not lose any of your benefits if you have your the only thing you will not be able to do is you won't be the doctors are very apprehensive about putting any medications putting you on any medications or any painkillers any of the schedule one narcotics any of the uh, medications that are highly addictive mm. um and like i think just off the top of my head, I think one of them was Ambien because I had to take a urinalysis for Ambien because they control uh, they consider that a controlled substance because it is so habit forming. Mm. So any of the medications they consider habit forming, they won't prescribe to a veteran on medical marijuana because of it being a schedule one narcotic. But I think I think that depends depends on the doctor too and the situation and i don't know. yeah i mean so, fortunately if you have a medical marijuana card that's a good alternative to a lot of those things especially if you're using ambien for sleep we can exactly plenty of strains like indica that can help out with your sleep yeah exactly sleep you pain know. you know it's 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 all there right so that's the good thing is is a lot of the stuff that is you're going to be getting those medications for it treats so right. and so you can avoid you can avoid the highly addictive stuff that's more harmful to you anyway just by keeping exactly. on what you're keeping on with and exactly. it gives you like we were talking about before like being able to have like that kind of control over your health care is a huge thing especially mm -hmm. for people who are suffering through like ptsd and you feel like anxiety or you feel like you don't have control over what's going on like having you know control of your health care is huge because like i was just on a med you know, pharmaceutical medication that's not working well for me. So, you know, I had to stop it, but then I can't, you know, see my psychiatrist for a week later. But then if I have, you know, let's say I, you know, I smoke a bowl and I get a little anxious after that one. And I'm like, okay, well now I know I'm not going to buy the strain anymore. And I'll use different ones mm -hmm. that work better for me. You know, same way you used to give an example too. So it's nice having that control back in your own hands. Yep. You know, it's, and it's great. You know, it's like I said, I, I tell everybody, if you gave everyone a joint in this world, there wouldn't be war. People would finally be happy for a change. You know, <laughs> it's just, it's just a met, it's something that I don't realize why, what the fuss is about, you know, <laughs> truly, you know, there's worse things in this world than what, what people are making that big of a deal over. Right. Yeah. You know? but it's, that's why it's important to have these conversations and like break that stigma. <laughs> You know, because I mean, like and when then, I first started smoking it medically, like I was apprehensive about letting people know publicly I did too. And I'm like, a, a doctor gave it to me, like a doctor yeah. prescribed this for me, and it, yeah, it legitimately know, benefits me. Like I use it recreationally in the past too, but like now it's like, okay, look, there's legitimate benefits to this. It, it, it's great because I always see the post, and it's so it, it it's so true. It's like it should be just as ex socially accessible accessible as a mom to say i'm gonna go home and smoke a joint is i'm gonna go home and have a glass of wine 
you know? Right. Yes, you're just as acceptable. Yeah, I completely you know, it, agree. Because, you know, truly, I my biggest thing is, is everyone's like, but, you know, it's illegal at this level because of a certain reason. I was like, but listen, have you ever heard of a pothead beat his wife? <laughs> right. No. <laughs> He's more worried about where the Doritos are, man. Yeah, you know? right. You don't see a lot of people that are getting high, get behind the wheel, and get into car accidents. Like, no, no the ones, you the know, ones going you do, five under. <laughs> yeah, you do have. Yeah, you do have those though. I'm not going to say they aren't there. Yeah, you know, you do have those. To drive while you're high. Yeah, don't you do, do still have those idiots. You know, however, you know, but for the most part, you know, there's other stuff out there that's legal that cause more problems. We just need to look at it as the stigma that it's just been so bad for so long. That, right. You know, we got to break that cycle ultimately. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And we're doing good work with that too. You know, your video is yeah. a good point with that too. And, you know, I talk about it frequently on this podcast. So it's definitely, we're changing the paradigm slowly. And so, yeah, dude, so speaking of changing paradigms, so let's talk about what happened with that uh, county commissioner meeting. Yes. Um, it was on Thursday. I um, was able to meet with uh, Commissioner Sean Parks um, because I actually had a, it was in April, April, I had gone to the commission meeting and told them, hey, listen, you know, we need to start a peer support team for our guys and girls and uh, our brothers and sisters in this fire and EMS service because we, they don't have anything. They don't have any support whatsoever they, they, they they're they completely lost you know they have no treatment um and mr parks was very open to it at that meeting so from there he uh said you'll be wanting to hear from me you, you'll be uh you'll just be you'll be listening you'll be hearing from me soon so right i on. went through and uh, I was probably about two weeks, two, three weeks later, didn't hear anything. Things got a little busy. So messaged him on Facebook and he said, okay, well, the office and office is supposed to call you. I waited a few days, didn't hear anything. So I, I just called his office and made my own me uh, appointment, but <laughs> nice. whatever. So at this meeting, you know, we discussed pretty much how there is absolutely zero policy and procedure for any treatment of not only and. I don't want to take away from first responders and veterans by saying this, but there is no treatment for anybody for a mental health or PTSD crisis at the county whatsoever. Yeah. So I could say this at a point where what if one of our public works guys, you know, as much as, as much as we want to sit here and say, yes, I, I've always, we can sit here and say it. So we're blue in the face, our, our, our paramedics and our firefighters and our EMTs, we see shit that no one else should ever have to see. However, what about that public public works guy that had three deployments? That's just, you know, working as a, as a public works because that's what he, that's what he's comfortable doing. Right. And, you know, maybe he's out there and sees a crash or something like that. And now it triggers something. Mm -hmm. a, a motor vehicle accident that now he he sees this person maybe bloody or something now that may witness him back from a deployment or something okay well now not only do we not only have it for our, our first responders we don't have it for a veteran that is working for the county at all you know and and that's where he was he was actually very upset about that you know he actually because his his brother uh is military and he suffers from ptsd as well and he saw the struggles that he went through for many years and he could not understand how there was no policy in place already mm -hmm. with it being already 2019 2020 you know it's the, the, and I and I told him I and I told him I said I was disgusted to understand that in 2020 we don't have anything. Yeah, it's appalling. I said because you're telling me that in. Oh, hold on, what's going on my internet here? It might be mine too. Am I not the best where I'm at? I think you got connectivity is probably on my side.
Okay. But um, anyways, uh, I just, uh, he, I said, it's appalling to under, to realize that we've been doing this for so long and not treating our guys and girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been the talk conversation for a while. It's been on the forefront of, of so much. Like it's, it's, it's appalling. They don't have mm-hmm. some kind of thing there for it. So, I mean, even, even, let's say even, even, you know, going back to that example of a public works, public works worker who, you know, happened to be a veteran has old PTSD stuff that comes up new. It's like, just have counseling for everyone available. Everyone goes through stuff too, you know, exactly. But especially exactly. for these at more at risk populations, especially for the at risk populations. But I mean, it's, it, it's something that you'd think should be built into taking care of your employees. Yeah, I'm glad and, he's receptive to it. Yes. And when I was going through that, you know, he, he, when I, when I explained to him what had happened to me, he didn't, when, let me rephrase that. When I went back to the County commission in November, I had, when I explained to him what had happened to me, he was very upset at what had happened. And I told him, I said, Mr. Parks, I said, you're truly lucky for what happened. I said, I could have sued this county. Mm. I said, and he says, I know. And I said, but that's not what I want. I said, I want change. I don't want money. I want change. And I said, on that note, though, and I'm talking about change and talking about about lawsuits, I, I caveated to that. I said, as you know, Justin, Lake EMS has absolutely no SOGs. Not for, and, not for the mental health side of stuff, no. No, 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 no. Not even mental health. Nothing, 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 nothing. Because remember, Justin, what was our sick time policy? I don't even know. I was always too terrified to even take it. Sick time policy. Because it was just kind of, you there? Yeah, sorry, I broke up a little bit there. Yeah. Well, what was no, the policy again? No one really knew the sick time policy because it wasn't really existent because we didn't have any SOGs. Because when we were part of Lake EMS, we had policies and procedures. However, That's right. when we transferred from Lake EMS to, to the county, those policies and procedures that were part of, the, part of when we were that private agency weren't transferred over. And they never got rewritten. And they never got rewritten ever. So Jesus. we were, they were flying by the seat of their pants and they're still been flying by the seat of their pants. It's been years for almost four. Jesus Christ. And I told him, I said, if you're not trying to do this to protect your employees, I said, you need to do this to protect yourself. I said, because now you're getting to a point where I said, our paramedics and our EMTs don't even know what they to do, what they're doing right or wrong. I said, they don't know what they're, what, how many times they can call in. They don't know how many times they can do this, how many times they can do that. If they do this, they need to make sure this X, Y, Z is their punishment. I said, because this supervisor does this different. I said, in this suit, and I, I name dropped. I didn't care. What are they going to do? I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to tell them what the case is and i said and it's going to be that way with anybody i said even when they retire you know truly when they retire it's gonna be the same way because we are all different people Mm -hmm. so you can't sit here and say that oh we don't need policies because we're all going to treat them the same it doesn't work that way no because we me and you are going to have two different uh, two different ways that we treat a situation however we need to if we had it in black and white we could actually do it the right way right yeah instead of trying to manage it on your own you have actual guidelines that help you get there and you know your employer's got your back taking away that level of stress too because one of the biggest things that are stressful about taking those days is because you always thought the employer was going to be either not retributive, but like, it's just, you felt like you were letting other people on your team down and you felt selfish taking a yeah. mental health day or things like that. So if you have some kind of system built into the system, then that's going to let people actually take care of themselves. Yes, exactly. And you know, that's what I tried telling them. I said, and it's going to keep you. I said, because what does it take for one person to say, you know, you fired me because you didn't 
because of this or this or this. I said, you fired me because of PTSD. You fired me because of I was this because I loved this person or because I was this religion or because I was this skin color. No, I fired you because you called out 12 times and our policy only says you can only call out four times in a year. Okay. It protects well, that's everybody. What, it protects everybody because, you know, as an employee, I want to know what rules I have because at least I can know, well, Hey, I know Sam did treated me right. Or Casey <laughs> gave me the right, gave me the right discipline because that's what's in the book. Right. I know that she's not going to go do this to somebody else, do, do this to somebody else different because perfect example, the mental health, you know, how many people have gone home from a call that they have sent home or sent to a fit for duty evaluation? No one knows from what I've heard. No one. Yeah, dude, I should have been multiple times. Yeah. Because there are times I was not fit for duty. Yeah, but they didn't, but they made that decision. They made that executive decision to make it for me a week later. You know, that truly is, if you want to, that is targeting, you know, by definition. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, and, but however, you know, with that being said, he wants change. Good. You know, Good. he really does. I am now been tasked to create a policy and procedure on how mental health and PTSD is treated at the HR level. Which I think is fucking amazing. Like yes. I love, I love that not only is he, not only is he like, okay, cool. Yeah. We need these, these SOGs, but now also he's like, okay, you write it. Use someone that is at that ground level who can understand what people actually need. Like you're the one and that's, that's why he wanted that. it that way. And that's exactly what he wanted. And he wants me to reach out to other departments as well and try to find he that these other cities and other counties that have these mental health pretty much already built into their protocols or already built into their policies so we can try to make the very best policy that we can come up with that's, that's smart too because you can go other places see what's worked how they implement how they do it exactly yeah that's that's very smart and um he also wants to develop a peer support team for ems and fire so that is a big thing. As you know, it's actually been statistically proven that with a peer support team, they have a, uh, it's a lot better with a critical incident team and a peer support team um, with treatment of mental health issues and um, PTSD for long-term treatment um, for mental health. So it's actually longevity to help actually help their employees stay in their career they're in. So that's, awesome. that's actually a long-term investment for them. Um, and then he's going to be talking about the, uh, the, he's fast tracking the policy, the, the SOGs, because he says that's, that's ridiculous because we can't have something that opens us up for a lawsuit as big as this. Right. You know? <laughs> Even if he's looking at it with that interest, it still yeah. benefits people overall. It still needs to be there for me. That's a reason. Well, no, he, to be there. he looks at it as in my way too, but he says, I have to put it in a way that puts a fire under people too right so even though his unmotivated colleagues may not want yeah, may not see he it the understands way he where it comes from from the employee he goes because it, it'd be hard to work somewhere if you don't have any rules to follow and then if you get disciplined for this and this person doesn't get disciplined for that or vice versa you yeah. know it's he, he understands that and he says that's and he goes but he needs to put it into a perspective that makes it where they need to do you know what i mean it's right. kind of like that that opposite attraction you know you you tell a kid what not to do so they'll do it it's like reverse psychology yeah yeah, yeah. hey man whatever works dude yeah you know, i'm glad you're part of it and um actually he was uh he talked at the county commission i didn't have a chance to actually watch it yet but he's talking about um uh raises for emts as well 
um, bumping dope. up, uh, starting EMT raise it, uh, it pay from eight something to 10 something an hour. Very um, huge. Yes. So he's trying to push from that. And he says he doesn't think it, it'll be hard to get the other county commissions on commission commissioners on board. He says he only has to get two. So uh, right on because they have a 30 percent attrition rate, which That's I told so high. I told them I think it's higher. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is, too, because it's. I told them I think it's higher because I said I said, to be honest with you, I don't see I barely see anybody on a box I know. I said, and it always seems like I'm seeing someone new. Dude, that's and what I, I think too, man. I mean, even, even everywhere, everywhere mm -hmm. I used to work, man, I only see a handful of people that are still yep. in the same place. Um, I can probably count on one hand. I did talk to him about the mandated hours, about how they're skewed and mm -hmm. they're pretty much falsified. Um, and for many of the viewers, let me go ahead and explain how that, how, let me go ahead and explain. Pretty much what would happen is with a mandate, a mandate, you would get mandatory for a mandatory shift. Easy enough. However, say, for instance, I was no, knew I was going to get mandatory, but I like working X station with X partner. So I go ahead and pick it up before I get mandatory so I could pick my poison. Right. That did not count. For mandated hours. It only counted if they called you and mandatory you and placed you at a station or if they called you and said, hey, you have this station or this station. Which one do you have? The only time that mandated hours counted is if a supervisor placed you on a truck. So you couldn't have any control over your schedule. You couldn't try to take some power back by just picking up your ship ahead of time Correct. for that pay period. They're like, nope, you're a slave to the will of the... Correct. So yes. what would happen? And I told them, I said, those hours are skewed because of that very reason. I said, we have many people working a lot more than what you think, because you get these mandated hours that say you work the, that we had this many hours mandated, but really there's a lot more because we have paramedics and EMTs picking their up the shifts so they can pick where they want to work or pick up who they want to work with, which I completely get it. You know, if you're going to get mandatory, you might as well be happy while you're at work. Oh yeah, that's what I would always do. I would always I would see too. It. I, would always I was see like, it in my, oh wait, I got two twenty two, two twenty one, or three three twenty one. I'm like, hell no! I'd rather <laughs> be on, uh, uh, nope, 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 nope. Put me anywhere but there. Yep. You know, so I'm gonna pick up somewhere else, and that's what I told him. I said, so those hours are false, and he goes, I had no idea. Hmm. A lot of this, truly, after talking with him, you know, because it was an hour long meeting. You know, a lot of the stuff that does go to the county commission is fluffed um, because it has to go through John and Jerry. Then it has to go through the assistant city manager. Then it has to go through the city manager. And then if the HR has anything to do with it, they're going to fluff whatever they need to fluff. Mm -hmm. And then it has to go through their county attorney because they need to figure out what they can and cannot say. And then after that, it finally will he hit the county manager or the, the county commissioners. So let's go ahead and say, instead of them seeing this ugly baby, they get to see this, this ugly baby with makeup. Yeah. You know, and he was just, so our voices have finally been heard and he's just, Un, it, it, it's it's he he hears us now that's all i can say you know i don't want to put too much out there because i would love i, I want to keep his trust right now and i really do want to keep an open working relationship mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but it's we're going on the right direction and i really hope to see more and you know here's the thing though this isn't this is this is only a step in the right direction you know as bad as it sounds, this is only a small little victory. You know, we have now we have the permission to write these policies and procedures in place, but now they have to be implemented. They have to still be voted on by the county commissioners. Um, and now our HR and our supervisors have to follow it. So that's the big thing. So now right. that we have now we have to write them and now we have to implement them. So, and once that happens, I'm hoping this stuff spreads like wildfire, because if we get this policy in place 
now we can go to these other counties in the state of Florida and to the world, to the, to the United States and go, this is the model that we need. You know, this is what we need and this is what needs to be instituted for every veteran or any organization that has a fire and EMS system, mm. because this is what works. And, and, and obviously I'm going to need a lot of input. I'm only one dumb person here. <laughs> you know, I'm only a veteran here. You know, I, I don't have no college education. I have no psychological, I have no MD and any type of behavioral therapy. I have nothing. So this is only coming from my perspective. This isn't coming from an actual perspective of an actual clinician or as an employer. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that has going to be worked on and changed. And, but, you know, it's going to have to be just one word at a time, I guess. <laughs> Still though, dude, that's awesome, man. Like you're doing it, man. You're, you're, you're moving the needle in the right direction for sure. in, in a real big major way. And I'm, I'm really stoked to uh, be along for that ride, so to speak. And yeah, that's awesome. It's awesome to see. I I'm really encouraged by it. Man, have, yeah, man. That's awesome, dude. So anything else? Uh, I mean, that's already a fucking ton. Like, that, that's amazing. But um, anything else you want to update on or anything else before we uh, bid adieu? No, I mean, I just want to thank you and everyone else. Like I said, if you guys want to come out to the event June 19th, uh, 8.30, if you're coming for the ride, St. John's Hops um or kick stands up at 10 30 registrations from 8 30 to 10 be out there um if not just go out straight to gator about 10 10 30 at raffles to uh heading to tacoma it's gonna be an eight day ride um i've done a lot of different things so you can follow me through the ride i have a um app on my phone called rever uh, so every day that I'm going to be on this ride, you'll actually be able, I'm going to be posting a link actually on my Facebook page and on my, uh, and you're going to be able to click the link and you're actually going to be able to live follow me through the, wherever I am. So you click it, you see where I'm at. So it's a hundred percent tracking. So government can watch me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no. That's awesome though, man. Yeah, and then I'll be I'll be also streaming some live videos. I'm gonna try, depending on cell service, all kinds of stuff. You know, it's phenomenal. You know, just the support that I've been granted. You know, I'll have some shirts at the event as well. You know, I'm gonna only have a limited amount. Um, I put the order in today, so you know, all the proceeds go up go to St. John's Hops. Um, it's just going to be a hell of a time, man. Thank you for your help, you know, and it's just going to be fun. Yeah, man. I love it. I'm here to help out however I can, dude. Looking forward to that event. And those who want to follow along, what are your uh, social media accounts? Are you posting, posting all this stuff? Yeah, we got uh, on Facebook at C2C for PTSD. That's S-E-A, the number two S-E-A, number four PTSD. You can also go to my website. Same thing, C2C for PTSD.org. Insta, C to C for PTSD, YouTube, C to C for PTSD, same thing. Um, YouTube hasn't really been updated as much. I'm going to try to get more active. It's just really hard lately because I'm, I'm the only one, you know, a lot of things is a run is usually organized by a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm doing this single-handedly. <laughs> and right now we've got almost, I think, four, 350 to almost 400 people interested in the ride. So damn, dude, it's amazing. Yeah, we have a we have a lot of people interested, and I'm having to do a lot of things, and I'm being pulled in a lot of different directions. So I haven't a lot of time, a lot of, haven't had a lot of time to edit and stuff. So um, it's just gonna be I'm gonna be chugging along after that, probably after the, you know, I'm gonna be because I'm gonna be recording on the way up, and everything. I have my GoPro system and everything set up. Um, but it's just gonna be a hell of a time, and you know, it's you know, like I said, St. John's hops, you know, you can go to them, their, their website. I think they spell theirs actually fully out. It's not S T um, John's. It's actually the full St. John's hops. Like I said, the, also the great uh, one team, one fight for PTSD, you know, great supportive network. If without him, I wouldn't be here as well. You know, he was that great push behind me. I, he, I wouldn't have been able to connect with St. John's hops. I wouldn't have the, be able to have the support, 
behind Gator Harley Davidson without him. So, you know, Keith Totten, an amazing guy, you know, just truly does care about veterans and getting the word out there and actually caring about people. So, you know, hats off to him, you know, and just thank you for you and thank you for all your listeners and thank you to everybody that's supporting C to C, you know, it's, it's just, thank you. You know, in, in less than five months, I'm at almost five, 600 people on the Facebook group. So it's only going to grow a little bit more. So. Dude, that's so awesome to hear, man. That really gets me all nice and toasty. I love it. I love it. This momentum is amazing. So yeah, I love this mental health revolution we're working through, man. We're doing good work and I really appreciate you and everything you do for it. So thank you again for coming on. Thank you to everyone that's listening and we will see you next week. Bye everybody.